but if you want. Um, this is Julia Whitup with Talk Story Media. And today we have with us Brit Tanya from the UK, who's going to talk to us about Ho'oponopono. So I'm really excited to hear about this. Super, I'm very excited to be sharing it. I'm gonna share my screen because I've present, I've prepared a few slides just to make sure that I find my way through what I'm going to share with everyone. Okay. So yeah, I'm Britannia. Um, I am a Ho'oponopono practitioner I'm also a consciousness coach and trainer. And just a little bit of a back, background into who I am. I, I've always been really fascinated by energy. Um, and I think it goes right back to when I did A-level chemistry. And I realized that all we are is energy. And all that there is in this universe is energy. And I've dabbled in Reiki. I've done a bit of body talk, access consciousness. Um, and it's for me, it's really been about understanding how to get the most out of this experience, this human experience. Um, and I think when I was really young, I was really connected. I was quite religious. So I was really connected to the idea of God. And then that kind of shifted and changed. And I'm now much more spiritual than I am religious. But it's almost like I always knew there was more to this human experience mm -hmm. than just being, you know, the logical part of being human. So I think my whole life has been about exploring that and understanding it and, and now helping other people to understand it and make the most of it. So I want to share um, my second slide, my third slide. So this slide is something that I've created and I created it because I started writing a book and there was so much information and I wanted to put it in a format that it made sense. And since writing this book, I have now created the slide. And so I'm just gonna very, very briefly touch on it because I don't really need to go, this talk isn't really about this, but Ho'oponopono is a part of it. So my understanding of how we are as humans is that most of us are driven by our subconscious and our subconscious, the purpose of our subconscious um, self is to ensure that we survive our survival, our physical survival, and that we get our human needs met. And these human needs that I've got down the side here were created by Tony Robbins. And they are consistency. So consistency is to know that tomorrow when we wake up, that life is going to be pretty much the same as it was today, and that we will have the ability to survive in that life. Um, variety, which is a complete um, contrast to consistency, but we need variety because variety helps us to grow. It keeps life interesting and exciting. And I think that's why a lot of people have midlife crisis because they, they get to the midlife point <laughs> and they're just like, I can't believe that this is all there is to life. Um, <laughs> and, through my, and through my coaching, I've seen people do quite drastic things to create variety in their life. Even so far as to on weekends getting absolutely blind drunk um, just to make sure that there is some kind of spontaneity and, and unknown in their lives. So variety is another human need. The next one is a need for connection. Um, and that's a need to be able to belong, to be loved, to love, to be part of a community. And again, that's also at sort of odds with the next one, which is significance. And that's the need to know that there's value in yourself, that you have value and worth, that um, you are important and unique. Um, and, and that's also incredibly important to us as humans. So the subconscious uses programs, beliefs, sense making, it uses the ego, so the identity of who we think we are, all of those things to ensure that we survive and we get our human needs met, which is all well and good. And I was trying to think of an analogy for this. And the best I can come up with is almost like how the cars are going to be in the future, driverless cars. Mm -hmm. So our subconscious is a bit like the sort of the car driving itself. Yeah. And what it uses is it uses um, our experience of reality, whether we um, find something positive or whether we find it negative, to create beliefs and programs that then cause us to think feel and act in a certain way. 
But the downside of this is that none of the stuff that's going on in there, a lot of it isn't the truth. So um, funnily enough, I actually got triggered last week. I was driving home and I happened to pass somebody who just passed their driving test. They had in England, they have green P plates to say oh. that somebody's passed, but they're still, you know, new. Uh -huh. um, this poor person had obviously cut someone up or done something that had upset another driver. And this other driver was going absolutely ballistic. He got out of his car and he was screaming at the person in this little mini. Oh, and no. beating, thumping the windows of this little mini. And I happened to drive past while this was all happening. And um, I, I got such an emotional trigger. I started feeling like short of breath. Um, I started feeling scared and anxious. And, and it wasn't even happening to me. It wasn't even you, yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was being attacked. And that's, that is purely the subconscious. And um, I sat with it because obviously I've got all the tools that I do in during this stuff. So I sat with it. I did her Ho'oponopono, which I'll go into a little bit more detail. But um, what I realized from that was it, it, was, it was the result of something that happened to me in my, my, when I was a child. Um, I think I was grabbed roughly. I'd obviously done something to upset one of my parents. Um, and they grabbed me by the wrist and had dragged me and obviously were shouting at me <laughs> while this was all happening. And from that, my subconscious created a trigger so that if anyone got angry or upset, um, there was then a program that I would run. And that program, I know, I've known it my whole life. If I'm in a situation where people get really, really angry and upset, I flee. I just, I run. I try to get as far away from it as possible. Um, it's meant that I've been out um, in social settings in a pub or something in the UK when I was a teenager. And if a fight would break out, I would literally run over people to get out of the pub as fast as I possibly could. <laughs> I'm out of here. I'm out of here. And, and that's what the subconscious does. It um, experiences something and it's sort of like, for me, whatever happened to me when I was a very young child was traumatic. And I would have interpreted that as something that was dangerous to my survival. And because it was dangerous, my subconscious would have created a program to ensure that I never ended up in that situation again. And the program it wrote for me was to run and get out of there as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, that's just one example. But we have hundreds and thousands of these programs, and some of them serve us, and some of them don't serve us. But when we're being operated by our subconscious, we aren't aware of them. They just happen to us. Okay. And we then aren't able to, I suppose, choose the reality that we live in. We're constantly reacting rather than choosing our actions. So a negative thing might be if for some reason we've grown up with a belief or a story that we're unlovable, anytime somebody shows us love, we might react in a way that pushes them away from us. So, I mean, most people would like to be loved. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If you have a program like that, then obviously that's something that's sabotaging you. Yes. And the part of us that is like the creative potential I see in us humans is this part here. It's the thoughts, the emotions and the actions, because that's where we start to be able to take over our own creativity of our, of our life and our future and, and living our life. And at the moment, or for most people, the subconscious runs your thoughts, your emotions and your actions, because we're constantly thinking thoughts all the time. But the more aware and the more conscious we become, the more we can choose the thoughts that we want to think. And then the emotions will come from that and then the actions will come from that. And the reason why we would want to take over our thoughts and emotions and actions from our subconscious and, and consciously choose them is because all the things that we really want in life, the things that we don't feel that we can always achieve, so fulfillment, success, happiness, bliss, all of those things are our natural state. But because our subconscious has muddled us up, we aren't always able to access them as readily as we want. So the way that I've done this diagram, so this is the subconscious, this is the conscious, which is where I sort of help people to become more conscious, more self-aware. And this is reality. And these are the cogs we're playing with. 
but these golden cogs up here are the consciousness tools that we can use to help us become more conscious. And Ho'oponopono is one of those tools. Um, other tools that I haven't got on here but that would fit into here are mindfulness, um, positive thinking, um, a lot of the things, meditation, a lot of the things that we find now in, in modern society are tools that we can now use to help us move from being run by our subconscious to being more self-aware and more conscious. Are, are there any questions about this at the moment? Wow, this is great. I'm just, no questions. I'm just very impressed with this um, slide. <laughs> I want one of these slides. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. It took me a while to get it all together and working how I wanted it to. Mm -hmm. I like so, it. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to move on because, as I said, I don't want to dive too deeply in it because I want to focus more on Ho'oponopono. Okay. But I wanted to just give you a context to how I see Ho'oponopono helps us. Okay. So Ho'oponopono, I'm going to move on to, this is just a blank slide and you'll understand why it's blank in a minute. So Ho'oponopono is an ancient Hawaiian practice and the purpose of it, when I, in the last slide, I said the place that we were playing at was thoughts, emotions and actions. But if you were to take away our thoughts and our emotions, if you were to drop all of that, to drop your identity, to drop all your attachments, um, your fears, all of those things and let all of that just disintegrate away, what you're left with is bliss. So bliss is our natural state. And the only thing that keeps us from experiencing bliss are the thoughts that we think. And those thoughts, 95 plus percent of those thoughts are generated by the subconscious mind, trying to get us to behave in a certain way to survive. And if we're able to let go of all of those thoughts, what we're left with is connection to source, connection to our source, our truth within ourselves, and a state of bliss. Wow, and that'd be great. Pono, yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, we, we struggle so hard to try and get where we think we need to go. But actually, it's not the getting there. We actually are already there. It's the letting go of the illusion that actually allows us to experience it. And that is what Ho'oponopono does. It allows us to sink into that space. Um, because the theory of Ho'oponopono is this blank slate, this nothing. Um, Joe Vitale wrote a book with Dr. Hugh Len, and Dr. Hugh Len, I'll give you his, his story. So Dr. Hugh Len is, um, he's, I mean, he, he's the person that trained me in Ho'oponopono. And he is a Hawaiian mystical Ho'oponopono practitioner. And um, there was a, an institution for the criminally insane in Hawaii. And I think he's also a psychologist, but don't quote me on that. Mm -hmm. And they were struggling because it was such an awful place to work or to be um, that their star turnover, I think it was like every couple of months, people just didn't last longer than two months because it was such an awful place. So when he got there, he said, I'll come and I'll work there, but I'm going to use Ho'oponopono. I'm not going to use the, tr the traditional psycho you know, psychology methods. And he didn't go and speak to the inmates like most of the people did. What he did is he sat with a list of their names and he used the Ho'oponopono phrases, which I'll share with you shortly, to clear what came up in himself. So Ho'oponopono is about being 100% responsible for your experience of life. Um, and I think that is one of the reasons I love it so, so much. Because I'm actually just going to back quickly to the slide I was sharing before. So when we live from our subconscious state, we are constantly looking at the world outside of ourselves and evaluating it and, and sort of working out, is it working for us or is it not working for us? But what that does is it means that we are left as a victim, that things happen outside of us, outside of our control in the world. And we're constantly trying to figure out how to handle them. Mm -hmm. But actually, the more aware and conscious we become, the more we realize that we create our reality, that we, we create how we react to it, we create how we show up in it, 
We are constantly creating our reality from who we are being. And that brings us back to what I was saying about Ho'oponopono and being 100% responsible. So what he did is he had this list of names and he used the Ho'oponopono clearing phrases to clear what came up in him when he read the names. The emotions, the feelings, the energy, the thoughts, and he used the Ho'oponopono clearing to clear that in himself and to bring himself back into this blank zero state. Was he reading their, just their names or their entire case history? As far as I understand it, just their names. Huh. But I think he's also very advanced. So okay. when he reads their names, I imagine he gets a much more deeper imprint then, than most of us would. Okay. Um, and as the story goes, after two years, they closed this facility down. And the reason they closed it down was because in those two years that he worked there, um, the, the inmates either got better or they moved or whatever. There was nobody left. All the inmates had moved on by the time he'd finished his two years there. Wow. That's and that amazing. was just through using Ho'oponopono and taking absolute 100% responsibility. Yes. So with Ho'oponopono, if someone does something to you that upsets you, and you use her ponopono, you're not fixing them, you are clearing your experience of what is happening. Yeah, but I've noticed it changes them too. It does because <laughs> your reality cannot stay the same when you change, it just can't. Because when you let go of whatever's going on in you, then you won't see it out there in the world. It's immediately oh. gone. <laughs> and it, it, I think the way that I can explain it as well is um, when you know the truth of who you are, when you, when you experience source within you, really deeply, deeply experience it, only then can you see it in another person. And the okay. same goes for, for negative things. So only when you um, experience, I'm trying to think, abuse, can you see it in another person. Um, I had lunch with a friend of mine recently, and funnily enough, we were talking about anger. <laughs> she was explaining to me that um, her husband um, used to um, raises his voice with their children, um, and she finds it really, really upsetting. But he just thinks it's normal. Um, and it's got to do with the different backgrounds. He might have grown up in a really loud um, vocal family where they, you know, express themselves loudly to each other. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't ever threatening. It was a safe space. But to her, when somebody raised their voice, it really triggered deep traumatic experiences for her. So okay. it wasn't that he was right and she was wrong or she was right and he was wrong. It was simply that they were coming at it from different experiences. So when he raised his voice, she saw somebody who was threatening and angry and hostile, whereas he just was some, saw himself as somebody who was expressing himself. Yes. And that's wow. where Ho'oponopono helps, because when you clear what's going on inside of you, it's no longer there, so you don't experience it the same way. I wonder, thinking back and based on the things you just said, not too long ago, I witnessed a bad car wreck and I wasn't involved. I was just a witness, but I noticed for a month afterwards, I had PTSD. I had heightened startle reactions, everything that goes along with PTSD. And I kept thinking, why is this? I wasn't even involved in this accident. I just saw it. <laughs> yeah. And, it, um, and if I had done Ho'oponopono at the time, would maybe I could have avoided having PTSD for a whole month. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because, and it's, it's not even about the accident, it's how you experience the accident. Yeah. So whatever it triggered in you or whatever it created in you, whichever programs or whatever it happened inside of you um, through your subconscious, it is clearing that out. 
Well, my car was right behind hers, and I kept thinking it could have been me. It could have been me. And isn't it amazing? Because that thought, it could have been me. So that's your subconscious looking at your environment and saying, my goodness gracious me, you know, if you were in that car wreck, you wouldn't have survived. <laughs> or you might not have survived. It was a threat. Well, to it was your... pretty bad. It was pretty yeah, bad. Was a... yeah. yeah, threat to your physical survival. So your subconscious mind starts creating thoughts to try and get you into a state to sort of prevent that from ever happening. So you, by you repeating the thoughts, it could have been me, it could have been me, it creates a feeling of panic, which, which makes you, how did you act when you felt like that? What was your instinctual reaction? Well, I noticed right away my heartbeat went up. I couldn't get my breath. Um, and then I thought that I recovered from it, but for a month, everything would startle me. And I thought that's a PTSD symptom being that easily startled. Absolutely. And when you were startled, did you want to get away from whatever it was that startled you? Yes. And that's your, your subconscious taking, taking control of that again. Yeah. Trying to get you out of the situation that it perceives that is threatening to you, even though it didn't happen to you. Yeah, that's why I always thought people had got PTSD from things that happened to them. <laughs> and then here yeah, I was. Yeah, it's, it's not necessarily true. And her Pono Pono does. And the thing is, you see, when we connect to the source within us and truly deeply experience it, we realize we are eternal beings. And if we really truly knew ourselves as eternal beings, we'd know that nothing in this world will ever destroy us or damage us or make us less than we are. So all of that fear is really there to help us have this human experience. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's, it's, my Fun. <laughs> it's my belief that we're here to experience ourselves as creative beings. Um, and we kind of need that contrast. We need to experience ourselves as finite to be able to experience that creation um, as fully as we can when we're human. Okay. But sometimes it gets in the way. And I think that's what, for me, about becoming more conscious and more self-aware, it's about learning the tools and the things that can help me to let go of the dis disturbance from the subconscious so I can live a much more fully present and happy life. <laughs> Be here now. Exactly. Um, I just want to share the next slide, which is the phrases, if anyone hasn't done her Pono Pono or doesn't understand it. So there's four phrases. And the first phrase is, I love you. And when you say, I love you, you're saying it to the source within you and to source without. And if whoever's listening to this believes in God or Gaia or whatever else, I use the word source, but I mean, it, that's just my use. Please just, you know, change it to whatever it is that you're comfortable with. Um, I'm not attached to my way being the only way. It's just my way. <laughs> <laughs> So the I love you is saying that to the source, to the, to the source within yourself and, and opening your heart and really being in that space of I love you. And then when you say I'm sorry, what you're saying I'm sorry for is I'm sorry for my wrong thinking. So we've spoken about the subconscious thinking and that sort of constant sort of program thinking that comes through and how sometimes it isn't even the truth. So for you, when you were in your near car accident, you weren't actually, your life was completely safe. But the thinking that came from that was that you were under threat, that your life was being threatened. Yeah. So that is wrong thinking. Are you okay? Sorry. <laughs> <coughs> I don't know what. Uh, it's all right. We have <laughs> and, some big fires going on here. Oh dear. And it, the smoke is so bad. Yeah, I can imagine it must really stress your throat. <coughs> sorry. And so, <laughs> the I'm sorry is about saying I'm sorry to the source within you, to yourself, and saying I'm sorry to the source, to God outside of you, which is all one really, but just for our human experience, I'm sort of separating the two. Um, and it's saying I'm sorry, I'm sorry for my wrong thinking. I'm sorry that I programmed myself to believe this because I didn't mean to, it just happened because that's the way that the subconscious happens. 
Um, and I'm sorry that this is what I have going on inside of myself. And then when you say, please forgive me, you say it to yourself, to your truth, to your source, and you say it to source. And when you say it, for me, that there's, there's like a releasing of whatever the thought was that I was attached to. Um, and so you say, please forgive me. And then finally you say, thank you. And that's thank you to yourself for forgiving yourself and for letting it go. And thank you to source for forgiving you and letting it go. Um, and what I found with these four phrases is I sometimes say them one after the other. And other times I just sit with one phrase so sometimes if I'm just feeling completely in awe of the space that I'm in, in a really beautiful space, I might just sit with I love you and just say I love you over and over again. Um, and if I'm really sort of struggling, because where I am now with Ho'oponopono is I can almost feel the separation between the thoughts and my truth. But sometimes, like for instance, when that guy got all um, road ragey and I got really seriously triggered, sometimes they're like, uh, you know, because the the experience of what's happening is so incredibly strong I sometimes find it hard to separate myself my truth from it because it's so intense and then I might sit with I'm sorry for quite a long time and just keep repeating I'm sorry until I can feel that sort of space between the thoughts that I'm having and the truth of who I am and then I go on um, and those are the phrases really um, I'm trying to think um, sometimes you might experience that you have a problem or a resistance to one of the phrases. I know when I started Ho'oponopono, um, I got really triggered by I'm sorry. <laughs> and funnily enough, I can't even think why I was so triggered with it. I think it was um, feeling like I had to apologize for myself. Um, and I found that really quite, yeah, I was very triggered by it. So if you find you're resistant to one of the phrases, you can actually just do Ho'oponopono on the phrase <laughs> until you find that it shifts and lifts. I think you're on mute, sorry. I can't hear you, Julia. I think you're on mute. I muted and took off my camera because of this cough from this yeah, fire, but I'm sorry, I used to have problems with that because I would use it when I'm in conflict with someone and I want to change that. <clears throat> and I'd think, why am I sorry? They're the ones that... <laughs> exactly. So then um, I try to think of something I could be sorry for and that made me look at the situation in a lot more depth. And I would usually find out, oh yeah, I could be sorry. I overreacted or you know absolutely and I, funny enough, i've never looked at it like that but that's actually a really beautiful way to see it yeah so that's how i i was triggered by that every time too yeah um and funnily enough now now i love it yeah i, I do really too. love it i love saying i'm sorry it's weird isn't it mm -hmm. <laughs> um so yeah so if you are triggered by any of the phrases then do Ho'oponopono on the phrase because there'll be something within you that's sticking on it. I may have to go ahead and uh, mute my video and my, well, I'm going to mute the camera too because you'll just see me hacking. <laughs> okay, have a, have a good cough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I will ramble on about Ho'oponopono until you get yourself sorted. <laughs> So the whole Pono Pono for me has been, it's been really transformational. Oh, and something that's just popped into my head that might be really interesting for you that I can share with you as well, is that when I started Ho Pono Pono, um, I did have one experience right in the beginning that was quite impressive. I was in a car park, um, funny enough, it's all to do with anger today. And there was two guys that, as I, I think I finished my shopping, I got in my car and I was getting ready to drive off. And these two guys in front of my car started fighting and arguing. Um, and as I've shared, I get triggered by anger. <laughs> so I didn't like it, but I, would, I had just read the book Zero Limits. And so I thought, oh, okay, let me try Ho'oponopono. So I did it. And I started just saying, I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me and thank you. On what I was experiencing in that moment. And out of nowhere, this third person came along and he put his hand on both of the two men that were fighting shoulders. I couldn't hear what he said, but he said something. Um, and then all of a sudden, it just completely went calm and peaceful and quiet. 
And the two guys stopped arguing and shouting and screaming at each other. And they just walked off. Um, and I can't promise that it was Ho'oponopono, but it certainly felt like it was at that time when I was using it. But other than that, I don't think I really had sort of like an amazing experience of it initially. But I found peace when I was using it. But now the more I use it, I, I find my life is just completely transforming. Um, it is quite amazing. And so I see it a little bit like having a warehouse, <coughs> sorry, I'm coughing now, full of stuff. So throughout life, we've collected thoughts and feelings and experiences. And we have like this massive, massive room full of stuff. And when you first start clearing out a room like that, you take a few pieces out, but it doesn't seem to really change the room. But if you keep taking stuff out and you keep using this phrase, before you know it, you suddenly look around and there's a, like the quarter of the room is empty and there's so much more space. So for me, that's kind of been my experience with Ho'oponopono. But other people like Julia have started using it and have had amazing experiences straight away. So don't let my experience sort of color your experience, but just in case you don't see a transformational change, you know, phenomenal change immediately, um, don't give up on it. Because my, my experience was much more slow with it, but now I use it every single day. Every time I have something that comes up in my life that takes me off center, that takes me out of alignment, I use Ho'oponopono, but it's always focused on my experience of whatever it is that's going on in my life. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how it is. Are you back I the also, day? I've used it for <clears throat> um, situations that are bad and I don't feel that I can talk to that person. So I just think about them and do the Ho'oponopono and many times they come to me and they come to me and want to make peace so it's it does something to them it must Absolutely. it does because they are your experience of reality and if you change what's inside of you your reality has to change even though i'm not interacting with them except Absolutely. on on that level even though you're focusing on yourself um, I'm trying to think. I had a client who um, didn't like crowds and lots of people. And, um, and this isn't actually a Ho'oponopono thing, but just to share the whole, it, your experience starts within you. Um, so when he used to go to sort of like a party or something like that, I asked him what was his thought about the people that he was going to go and see there. And he said he thought that people were generally offish um, and not very friendly. So I said to him, okay, so who do you become when you believe that? And he kind of sat there and he went, oh, um, I suppose I become offish and not very friendly. <laughs> <laughs> and I said to him, so if you imagine an offish and not very friendly person walking into a group of people, how would those people respond to you? And he said, I suppose not very friendly and kind of offish. <laughs> So as soon as you change that inside of yourself, as soon as you change that, then your experience of the outside world changes immediately. It has to. It just has to. It if you does. Don't have it inside you, then the outside world isn't, isn't reacting to that. Right. They, they change. The, I, use, I mostly use it that way now. If I know someone's having trouble, <clears throat> I just think about them and do the clearing phrases over and over absolutely and it's clearing your experience of it so you're not trying to fix them or trying to fix somebody else or make them better or heal them or whatever you're healing your experience of whatever they're going through in yourself how you are experiencing it and then the external thing has to change because That's we're all energy it's so amazing it's so it simple is. it is um, and then finally, I mean, do you have any other questions? Um, uh, I just wonder why those words, but that's okay. <laughs> I think that those words, to me, it's about 
Well, the I love you is the connecting to all that is for me. That's how I experience it. When I say I love you, just even reading it now, my heart expands and opens. Oh. When we are in resistance to what is in life, when we're in fear or anger or hurt or pain or whatever else, we close off and we pull our energy in. And I actually do um, an experiment with people with dowsing rods where you hold them and you think of something really amazing and beautiful and the dowsing rods open up. And when you think oh, yeah. of something really scary or frightening or upsetting, they come in. Um, and it actually shows you how much your energy field expands or contracts depending on the thoughts and what you, that you think and the emotions that you experience. Um, and the I love you to me is that opening. Um, when you really, really think I love you to source to yourself, your heart opens, your energy expands. Um, and then the I'm sorry, it's very much about owning that you have inadvertently created wrong thinking. Um, oh, okay. and, it's, and it's when you when you feel that sort of acknowledgement of you didn't do it on purpose, but you have got wrong thinking that's going on inside of you. There's, um, I don't know, there's a change, there's a shift inside. I can kind of feel it sort of deep here in my sort mm -hmm. of, um, in my solar plexus. Okay. Um, and it's a releasing of it. And that's the same with the please forgive me. It's a letting go of that, that wrong thinking. And then to me, the, the thank you is back to the open hearted and back to the connecting to source. And on that one, I use the Hawaiian word, mahalo. Oh, how beautiful. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I think I'm going to give that a try myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. I don't know a lot about it, or I am not qualified to be a practitioner, but it's a powerful tool. It's an incredibly powerful tool. Um, and, and just using it and playing with it and trying it out, the more you use it, the more you experience it. It, it really is quite amazing. Um, are there any other questions? Um, no, I'm, what more do you learn to become a practitioner? It's more about experiencing it and truly knowing it. You know, being a practitioner is almost being it. Okay. So that's kind of because the concept I've kind of shared with you, but with who we are as humans, there's normally quite a lot of resistance <laughs> to aspects of what I'm sharing. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, and I think there's a lot of resistance to something that simple being powerful. Exactly, exactly. It's like, well, it has to be more complicated than that. But exactly. no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Um, and really, the last thing I think I was going to share with you is that um, if people want to, I run a free Ho'oponopono meditation on Tuesdays. Oh, um, good. And they can either find my social media details on my website, which I've got there or on that particular, that Facebook group, which is rather long and complicated. <laughs> Might be easier to go through my social media on my website. <laughs> yes, I suspect it will. And you're, could you put that up on the chat though? Yeah, I can, I can copy it and put okay. it on the chat. Um, but that's, yeah, I, as I said, it's a free, hang on a second. Oh, I guess you have to quit sharing first to do the chat maybe. No, I don't. I don't think so. Oh, okay. Just a moment. There we go. Um, here we go. So that's that's the Facebook group, and then let's see. Hang on a second, I'll shift you that way. And this is my website. And it's it's just it's a half an hour's meditation that I do on a Tuesday. Okay. Um, and what I do is um, I choose words that I think might trigger people. So, but they're quite general words like pain or anger or abuse or hurt. Um, and if people are part of the group, they're very welcome to send through any challenges that they're working on that they specifically want us to focus on in meditation. 
Okay. Um, and then I'm happy to help clear on those as well. So I normally share five words at a time and people read through them and they pick out the ones that trigger them the most and then we clear on them. Um, and I've also got some of Joe Vitale's music, which he um, created specifically to align with the Ho'oponopono clearing. Um, and we use that and it's, yeah, I do it every Tuesday at it's six o'clock UK time, which would be, I'm trying to think, what time is it where you are now? Well, um, <clears throat> I don't know. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm in the mountains, mountain standard time. Um, what time did we start our call today? 10.30 my time. Which was 5.30 my time. Okay. So at 11 o'clock Mountain Standard Time would be 6 o'clock my time, or p.m. So it would yeah. be 11 o'clock your time every Tuesday that I do it. Okay, 11 p.m.? No, a.m. A.m. Oh, okay, that works. <laughs> <laughs> well, I used to interact with a lot of people from India, and it was the middle of the night when it was day for me. <laughs> Actually... Some of the people that join me on the call are from India, and I have people from China as well. It's wonderful. It's a, I, I think that's the thing I love about it as well. It's totally global. Um, and I started it, this particular free meditation, at the start of coronavirus. Uh -huh. um, and the reason was because I felt this whole coronavirus has been, it's been like a, a whole global clearing. Yes. It's, it's like we're all going through stuff together. And I've, at times, I can almost feel the fear in the air from people. Um, and for me, doing this every Tuesday was my way of contributing to, to that global clearing, to help clear and shift our sort of consciousness on this planet. Yes. I, I told several people I thought that the virus was an ally because the world needs to make changes. Absolutely. And isn't it amazing how, um, I mean, I haven't seen so many now. I mean, in, in the UK, we're kind of back to life as normal. Well, not really, but sort of. But isn't it amazing how just a few weeks of complete shutdown and, and the nature, you know, animals started coming out. The no. I mean, isn't that just so brilliant? The water in Venice cleared. I know. <laughs> they could see the fish down in the water and that water's been stirred up forever. <laughs> exactly. It wasn't the dolphins or whales or something swimming in there as well? Yes, I was amazed. I thought, oh, see, the world would, it was kind of a sobering thought. The world would be fine without us. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm hoping yeah. that we can evolve enough to realize that, that this experience will cause everybody to open up to trying to make the earth better place for everybody. Uh, and I think this Ho'oponopono is part of that. To me, the more conscious, the more aware we are as humans, the more connected we are to source, both you know, within ourselves and outside of that. And when we're acting, when, we are, when we're living and being from that space, there is no fear driving us to harm another human or harm the planet to survive because we, we know that we are in alignment with source and that life is there to provide for us and we'll always be okay. But we don't have to do it in a way that harms others or harms the planet or harms anything. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think it will. I think that, that this is the turning point for us. We're turning towards the light. I hope so, I really do. The thing is, it's what we all really want anyway. Because when you've experienced that, when you when you felt that connection and that alignment, you wouldn't want it any other way anyway. No, oh, that's what we all want. Exactly. <laughs> we're just we're just like toddlers. We sort of scream and shout and have a fit about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody's protesting. <laughs> Well, I will join you on Tuesday, and I hope you'll join our um, website at uh, shamanicarts.center. And I have. No, I've signed up. Oh, for good. Postcards. What? Isn't there something called your postcards? Oh, yeah, postcards from the Commons. Yes, and yeah. I'm going to put one of your articles on there next time, too. I'd love to have people start coming to to your meditation, I think it would help. 
Well, as I said, that was why I started. It was to help the whole of us, the collective consciousness and all of it, all humanity and the planet. And we had to, <laughs> yes, you're doing your little bit. And we had to cancel Traveling Shaman's camp this year because of the virus, but we've rescheduled it for next year. And maybe you can come over. That would be fabulous. That would be fabulous. I would love to have you come over and give a presentation on Ho'oponopono at Shaman's Camp. I would love that very, very much. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you for being with us today and giving us all this fabulous information. And we'll stay in touch. Thank you so much for inviting me. I've really enjoyed this. And so much love to everybody who's listening. Yes.